super fun stuff. So if you saw my last video, then you already know that I modeled a tune gun from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. As I made that video, I started to print out the model. And now after some time, I'm finally finished. So let me walk you through the effort of making a tune gun. After I finished designing the model in Tinkercad, I print the part. As you can see here, I'm printing the cylinder of the gun. There are eight parts to print out, and in total it took 26 hours. Obviously with the printer I have, the hotbed isn't big enough to print all the parts at once. After I had all the parts printed out, I began to sand. And more sanding. And more sanding. I sanded so much, I sanded off my fingerprints, and my hands still feel raw to this day. Overall, you want to get your print as smooth as possible, so there's less things to fix later on. With this print, I wanted parts that were movable. This included the cylinder, hammer, and trigger. I modeled everything to move, but the pins that move the hammer and cylinder were just not strong enough made out of the plastic. So instead, I trimmed a finishing nail, drilled holes where the pins should be, and glued in the nails. Then I filled the holes with some epoxy putty and, you guessed it, sanded it. The handle had to be printed in two pieces due to the size restriction on my printer. Luckily JB Weld makes a plastic glue and it bonds plastic pretty well. It's a two part epoxy that smells awful but it actually works great. So as I continue to sand like a madman, I know certain areas that were flawed from the print and needed filling. I remember that there was a product called Smooth On that was meant for 3D prints. Well, I didn't have that, and it's not the cheapest stuff in the world, but I did have the JB Weld epoxy. So I took a risk and I applied the JB Weld as a filler in certain areas. This was primarily the handle and the barrel. Luckily, this stuff worked great. It made a fairly smooth surface. Plus, it could be sanded pretty easily. So now you know. So after I was happy with how smooth the model was, it was time for painting. For painting, I used an airbrush. I first sprayed a primer, and then I sprayed a gray color. This was going to be my base color that I would build off of. The grips were sprayed a leather brown color for their base. Airbrush really made this easy and gave it a nice light coat of color. Next I painted a gunmetal silver on all the gray areas. One issue I had is it was hard to tell what areas I painted well. I think I needed more lighting, but I think I did get all the areas. Here you can see I have all the parts painted and it's looking really good, but all the colors are kind of flat. So I used another brighter silver and accessed certain parts of the print. I aim for large surface areas and areas I want to pop out more. I never mentioned the grips, but I used a leather brown and an orangey brown on top. It gave it some dimension. I also added some pinstripes to add even more dimension. The stripes used were leather brown, then a dark brown, and then a light brownish color for a little accent. To accent the silver, I edge highlight with white. After all this is done, I clear coat and put it together. All said and done, here's the final product and it looks even better than I thought. You can see some of the parts move and the sheer size of the thing. It's huge, but it's also so cartoony. I love it. And here it is, the Toon Gun. Now two more tune bolts to make and maybe the box. Thanks for watching.